What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at NoahMoreParties. And today's video is a breakdown of a guy who I am more and more in on the more I think about him this offseason. And that is DeAndre Swift. And I really think he's set up to smash this year in fantasy football. Let's get into it. <laughs> I got three reasons why DeAndre Swift is going to smash in fantasy football in 2022. And number one is that he is going to run better this season. Last year, DeAndre Swift averaged 4.01 yards per carry, which is only in the 45th percentile going back to 2016. He was not very efficient on the ground, even in the context of a Lions offense that wasn't very good. The other running backs on the Lions averaged 4.24 yards per carry as a collective, and so DeAndre Swift was not only inefficient on his own, he was less efficient than the other backs on his team, which is not a very talented group, really. It's mostly Jamal Williams and then, like, Jamar Jefferson and a couple other random dudes, Craig Reynolds, and his box-adjusted efficiency rating was 97.5%, which means given the box counts that he's seeing, the average carry for DeAndre Swift was worth 97.5% the output of the average carry for all non-Swift Lions running back. So he was slightly less efficient than them by yards per carry and by box adjusted efficiency rating. But the reason he's going to run better this next year is that 2021 was the first time in his career that he's been less efficient than his teammates. In 2020, he averaged 0 0.79 yards per carry greater than the other Lions running backs. His box adjusted efficiency rating was 116%. So his average carry was worth 16% more than the average carry for other Lions running backs as a rookie. In 2019, at Georgia, his box-adjusted efficiency rating was 130%. As a sophomore at Georgia, 109%. And as a freshman at Georgia, box count data is not available, but he was averaging 1.29 yards per carry, greater than the other backs at Georgia, as a true freshman, and that was a group that included Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb. So he's been outproducing, on a per-carry basis, really talented running backs throughout his career, did the same thing as a rookie in the NFL, and then took a big step back last season. Why did it happen? I don't really know. I just know that it's completely out of the norm for him, and there's not really any reason to expect that to continue going forward. I think it's much more likely that he returns to being the efficient, dynamic runner he's been every other year we've seen him going back to at least since high school. And so what would running better mean for him in 2022? Let's say we just gave him his 2020 rushing efficiency on his 2021 volume. Like, we're not assuming he carries the ball more. We're not assuming he does something, like, way outside of himself. He just does what he did in 2020 with the carries he had in 2021. That would give him 114 extra rushing yards. That's 11.4 extra fantasy points. That's 0 0.88 extra fantasy points per game. That takes him from 16.1 fantasy points per game to 16.95 fantasy points per game. So that's, that's almost a full point per game jump just from simply running as well as he did as a rookie. Bringing to my next point, I think his efficiency could be even better than that, given that this Lions offense is going to be better. And that's reason number two why DeAndre Swift is going to smash. And why would this offense be better? Because they're, they simply have better players now. Last year, they were trotting out Amon Ross St. Brown, Khalif Raymond, and Josh Reynolds as their top three wide receivers a year ago. And this year, they still have Amon Ross St. Brown, who proved he was a really good player last season. But they added DJ Chark, who's a dynamic, athletic, field-stretching weapon, and Jamison Williams, who is coming off a torn ACL, but whenever he joins the team, is also a dynamic, explosive, field-stretching weapon, in addition to having, like, strong yak ability. He's just a really dynamic, like, full-field threat, and they presumably are going to have TJ Hawkinson back healthy for the whole season. And what does that mean for the offense? Number one, I think it means more 11 personnel, more three wide receiver sets. Last year, the Lions ran three wide receiver sets at a 66% rate, which is slightly higher than league average. But again, they were charting out Amon Ross St. Brown, Khalif Raymond, and Josh Reynolds as their top three wide receivers. That's not scaring anybody. Better wide receivers equals more three wide receiver sets. More three wide receiver sets equals lighter box counts. Fewer defenders close to the line of scrimmage. Lighter boxes equals better rushing efficiency. We know, based on data, that the biggest determining factor in the outcome of a running play is how many 
defenders in the box, there are pre-snap. And we also know, given data, that the biggest determining factor in the amount of defenders in the box pre-snap is offensive personnel. And so three wide receivers, defenses are not going to be able to load the box as much as they would like. That's going to equal better rushing efficiency just through having an easier time on those carries. But it's also going to equal better passing efficiency because there's there's better weapons to throw to. Better receivers equals better passing efficiency. Better passing efficiency equals better offensive efficiency overall. Equals more yards and more touchdowns for this Lions offense in 2022. Last season, they were 22nd in total yards they were 25th in total points. The season before, they were 20th and 20th in the same categories with Matthew Stafford at quarterback. Let's say they become not even an average offense, just like let's say they finished 18th in points and 18th in yards. That's what the Browns were 18th in points and the Raiders last year were 18th in yards. And so if they produce at like a Cleveland Browns level in 2022, based on the share of the offense that DeAndre Swift had a year ago, that would give him 79 extra yards and two extra touchdowns over the course of 13 games, which is how many games he played last season. So over the course of 13 games, that would give him 79 yards and two touchdowns above and beyond what he had last season, simply by the Lions improving a little bit. That gives him an extra 1.17 fantasy points per game, bringing him up to 18.12. So based on running as well as he did as a rookie and the Lions offense improving just a little bit, he goes from RB9 in points per game to RB5. Like we're not we're not projecting huge jumps here, but he's improving enough to step into the top five running backs. And the third reason why I think he's going to smash in fantasy football this year is he's going to get more opportunities. And why do I think that would happen? Number one, because it's simply following the trend. As a rookie, 8.8 carries per game. Last season, 11.6 carries per game. In 2020, targets per game, 4.4. In 2021, targets per game, 6.0. In 2020, snap share, 47%. Last year, Swift was on the field for 67% of snaps. In 2020, his opportunity share among lines running backs was 48.6%. Last year, it was at 57%, which was still only 22nd in the league. So there's a lot of room for growth here. He could see, you know, 12 to 15 carries per game. He could see, you know, upwards of, you know, seven, eight targets per game. Who knows? You know, that snap share could get up into the, you know, the seventies. I don't know, but I think the biggest room for improvement here is simply in that opportunity share. He doesn't need to be on the field more. I think he was top eight in snap share, but opportunity share only 22nd. There's a lot of room to grow there. I don't see any reason why they need to funnel targets and opportunities and carries towards Jamal Williams versus DeAndre Swift, given the, you know, severe difference in dynamism from those two players. And he could see more opportunities just from offensive improvement overall. That's number two here. The more that the Lions are like producing efficiently, staying on the field more, converting third downs, gaining more first down opportunities, that's just more plays overall, more opportunities for yards, more touches, more touchdowns. So that's an avenue where DeAndre Swift could see more opportunity, even if he doesn't see a higher opportunity share. The third prong here is that an increase in opportunities is just a conceivable jump for a talented guy at this point in his career. Last season, DeAndre Swift played at age 22 and had a 25.8% dominator rating, which is his collective share of the total offense in Detroit. He had 25.8% of the total offense in Detroit. And from other running backs in the past, their transition from age 22 to age 23 in dominator rating, we saw LaShawn McCoy jump from 24% to 39%. We saw Lendale White jump from 25% to 28%. We saw Todd Gurley jump from 20 28% to 42%. David Montgomery, 24 to 29. Alvin Kamara, 27 to 30. Richard Mendenhall, 22 to 31. Frank Gore, 22 to 39. Maurice Jones-Drew, 21 to 36. Nick Chubb, 21 to 27. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm cherry picking here. These are guys who made jumps from age 22 to age 23. Not everybody does that, but it's completely conceivable for a guy like DeAndre Swift to take a small or even a big step up, like LaShawn McCoy saw a 14% jump in his dominator rating in the transition between age 22 and age 23. Todd Gurley saw an even bigger jump. Frank Gore, Maurice Jones-Drew saw jumps that were very similar. DeAndre Swift is right there with Maurice Jones-Drew, in my opinion, in in pure talent. I don't see any reason why he couldn't make that jump himself. And so I think there's, you know, a conceivable possibility that he takes a big step forward in his share of opportunities in this offense, his share of total offensive production here in Detroit. And if the offense improves, that's the cherry on top 
wheels up for DeAndre Swift. And so what does more opportunities, what would that mean for him in this offense? It's going to mean more carries. It's going to mean more routes and targets. He's already running a, a large, you know, variety of routes. He's running high value routes. And it's also going to result in more touchdowns. Last year, DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams combined for nine carries within the five yard line. So essentially goal line carries. They had nine of them. If that nine was one player, if DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams were combined into one player that had nine goal line carries, they would have been 19th in the league among running backs in goal line carries. Swift himself only had four. So Jamal Williams had five. Swift had four. He accounted for 36% of the Lions goal line carries. That's 26th in the league. And two of his five touchdowns came at the goal line. So 40% of his touchdowns came at the goal line. That's a very small percentage of his touchdowns given like league wide touchdown rates based on yardage. And so we should expect him going forward to like score a higher percentage of his, of his touchdowns at the goal line. And I also think there's a lot of room for improvement here for him to just see more opportunity at the goal line, given a how few opportunities Lions running backs had as a collective at the goal line and how few of those opportunities that DeAndre Swift himself was able to take. And so a better offense equals more goal line opportunities overall. And DeAndre Swift's progression just based on age and his talent will mean a larger share of those touchdown opportunities. So really the bottom line here is that DeAndre Swift was a top 10 running back in PPR points per game last season while playing poorly on a bad team. He was the RB9 in points per game. Given his history as a ball carrier, there's reason to believe he'll run better next season. Given the talent additions on the Lions offense, there's a reason to believe that they'll be better as a unit next season. And given natural age-based progression, there's reason to believe that DeAndre Swift will simply be on the field and play more and touch the ball more next season. And given that he was already a top 10 running back playing on a bad offense, with himself playing badly, with those slight improvements in each area, it's rocket ship emojis for DeAndre Swift next season in fantasy football. Let's <laughs> go.